Hello and welcome to Little Things with Amber L.B. Swenson. Today's episode is called The Habits That Make Us. And I hope that we can just take a little glimpse at our lives and take note of our habits to see if maybe it's time to adjust just a little, to get back on track, back where we want to be. But first, let me tell you a little bit about me. I have been writing and teaching Bible studies for the past 15 years. I've worked with women, youth, Sunday school. I've been blogging for Time of Grace since 2017. I've written two books for them. Really what you need to know is that I love the Lord and I love the Word of God. And I find that the deeper I go into the Word of God, the more astounded I am that He loves us and that He notices us and that He cares so deeply about our lives. And my role is really to get people into the Word and to show them how awesome it is and to really get them to a place that they want to know and love God more. That's kind of my mission in life in a nutshell. So back in March of 2020, everything was sort of thrown out the window in terms of schedule and habits at our house. So I had been in the habit of getting up in the morning and getting the kids up, and then I would read my Bible as they were getting ready for school, and I would head out right away and go work out at the gym. And um, while I was there, I'd listen to a podcast or a sermon, and it sort of set my whole tone for the day. And I would have, by you know, 8.30 in the morning, I was back, and I had already worked out, and I had been in the Word, and I was ready to start my day. Well, then school shut, and the gym closed, and my routine was sort of thrown out the window. And then on top of it, churches closed. And so our Sunday morning routine, which was to get up and go to, to church and then go to Sunday school, um, that too just went away very suddenly. And here we are five months later. And it's interesting to note how different my schedule looks now than it had for several years. Um, we're just getting ready to go back to school where I live and the kids are all going to be doing online schooling. So again, (laughs) it's not going to look like it did before and new habits have to be developed. And the way school is going to be doing online learning is totally different than it had been in the spring. And so it really made me think ahead to try to be intentional about the habits that we make for the school year. And just look at habits in general. So here are three things that maybe will help shape our outlook on habits and help us sort of fine tune what we're doing in our life. So the actor Bruce Lee, the man who was um, a martial artist, and he really bridged the gap between American Asians and Asians. He said this, I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks, but I do fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Isn't that funny? Because most people will be like that person who will practice 10,000 kicks, right? Because we all get bored doing the same thing. So you always want to try something new. So you keep trying a different kick, do something different. But we never really take the time to get good at one thing. I remember hearing the story once about a woman who was super excited because she found out that her hotel room was right next door to a famous pianist who was going to be having a concert the nights that she was in town. And so she thought, oh man, I'm going to hear all this marvelous music coming from next door. And what she heard all night was this pianist practicing scales routinely, over and over. And she was so disappointed. It's much the same as um, 
Olympians and those who are really good at sports. You know, right now, um, we would be usually having the Summer Olympics, and the Summer Olympics were canceled, of course, in 2020. But usually you have all those um, little stories about what the person, um, this famous Olympian, what they've gone through and what they do and how they got to be where they are. And what you usually see over and over and over and over and over is the, the Olympians in the gym you know, getting really strong and working out, or if they're a swimmer, they're in the pool. If they're a gymnast, they're, you know, at the at the gym doing these tumbles and all these fancy things on the balance beam. That's what you see over and over and over and over again, because they've practiced something until they've perfected it. What do you want to be good at? What are you willing to practice over and over again? to become good at? And what idols are you propping up to give you hope? (laughs) So often, we lean on all the wrong things. I was reading in Psalm 135, and I came across this passage. The idols of the nations are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but do not speak. They have eyes but do not see. They have ears but do not hear nor is there any breath in their mouths. Those who make them become like them, and so do all who trust in them. It is so easy to make idols out of the works of our hands. Being productive is where we find our strength or our identity, or as long as we get a lot done in a day, then we think we've had a good day, right? But notice what God says about the idols. They have mouths, but they don't speak. That's how we are when we don't speak the truths of God. When we just go throughout our day, keeping God's word to ourselves, keeping what we know to be true about God's word and the things around us to ourselves, not not saying anything about it. To our kids, you know, when they come across certain situations and you see the truth of it, well, We have a mouth to speak and proclaim God's truths. And that's what we should be doing. We have ears to hear the things of God. We fill up on so much babble, right? We watch the news. We go to our social media feeds. We chase after every little shiny thing in front of us to see where it will take us. Instead of going to the word of God to hear its truths. And what do we put in front of our eyes? Do we put all that high quality entertainment, all the flashiness, all the good looking things that we want to chase after? Or again, are we opening up our Bibles and letting our eyes digest the word of God? Get in the habit of tuning to God, turning to God and tuning into God. Studying his word, spending time in prayer. I know because there are times that I fall into the temptation of thinking, you know, I'll pray for a time and all of a sudden I'll look at the clock and I'm like, oh man, I got to get going. I got to get something done. No, I have just done the most important thing. I was getting something done. I was communicating with God and he is the only one who has control over everything I'm going to face today. So guess what? That is the most important thing I can do. Number two. This is from a man named Will Durant, and he was a historian, a writer, and a philosopher. And I got pretty excited when I found out he was a writer because there's a lot of truth in what he's saying. He said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act but a habit. I have met so many people, and I've probably said this before, but so many people have um, come up to me or sent me an email or talked to me and said, hey, I want to write, and I want to, you know, write this book, or I want to write for this magazine, or I want to write for this organization. What should I do? And the answer I always give them is the same. Sit down and write. You know, all those ideas in your head, sit down and write them out. Because so many people never get past the thought process. You have to get in the habit of sitting down to write in order to write an article or write a book. 
And, and you have to get in the habit of demanding excellence and integrity from yourself if you want to live with excellence and integrity. And what does that look like? Well, for instance, I always go back to Daniel, who when the administrators around him really wanted to oust him, they could not find anything that he didn't do. They said they found that he was not negligent with anything and he was trustworthy in all he did. That means every task that he was given to do, he did it so well that even when they came around after him snooping, like, well, did he really do that well? Yes, he did. And guess what? He wasn't showing up late and he wasn't half doing things. He was doing everything really well. Um, Being excellent and living with integrity is a matter of not complaining when you're asked to do something. It's a matter of just getting it done or being gracious in your words. That's how I want to be. I want to be the type of person that is gracious. Even when someone talks against me, there is a musician that I've been following for many years and he's sort of an odd duck and he often becomes the, um, oh, like people criticize him or poke fun of him. And I have seen over and over, I've noticed throughout the years, different times that I will hear, you know, a band poke fun of him or someone publicly poke fun of him. And the next thing, like six months later, this man is doing a project with that band or that person who poked fun of him. And I always found that incredibly amazing to be the type of person That if someone makes fun of you or speaks ill about you, to reach out to them and say, hey, do you want to collaborate on something? So they can get to know you and then they can feel bad about speaking badly about you. Um, I just found that incredibly gracious and I hope that God can help me to be that same type of person. Um, Jesus said this, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. And the New Living Translation put it this way. If you're dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. I love that. And one last thought on that in terms of excellence and integrity. I think when your heart really is Um, put on a pedestal, when people can really see what's in your heart is when you're really under trial, when you are going through something that isn't what you want to be going through, or when you um, aren't given the opportunities, or when something, you know, really thwarts your plans, how do you react then? Those are the times that we see if you're going to walk with integrity and excellence, and if you're just going to keep trusting God, or if you're going to turn and, you know, curse the world, or um, just say, well, I'm going to throw in the towel. There's no sense in even trying anymore, because clearly I never get what I want anyway. Um, You know, we're just given as Christians this platform to really walk with God in such a way that we can show the unbelieving world that even in trials, and even when things aren't going the way we would have them go, we trust God. What a beautiful responsibility that is, and God help us to do it well. Number three quote is a meme. Bad habits, easy to develop and hard to live with. Good habits, hard to develop and easy to live with. Isn't that the truth? I think the um, thing that is so easy for us to recognize is how easily we fall into bad habits. We don't necessarily consciously ever set out to make a bad habit, right? It's just something that kind of happens and all of a sudden we're there without even recognizing it. So I ran into a friend that I hadn't seen for quite a while and she was telling me that during this COVID business, she was really kind of troubled and, you know, the news headlines were all scary and freaky and she got into the habit of having a cocktail every night. And she said one became two and then she admitted, she said, I'm afraid by the time this is all over, I'm going to be an alcoholic. You just sort of fall into it. I remember having um, my first flavored coffee at a coffee shop. So it was in 2013, I had spoken 
at an event, I was dead tired. And I mean, dead tired. (laughs) And I just thought, well, I need something just for the drive home. So I stopped at this coffee shop. I didn't even know how to order. I didn't know what all these flavors were and syrups and creams and all this stuff. And I just, I, I asked for a recommendation. I got something and I remember taking a sip of it and it was like a little bit of heaven. Like my taste buds were going, woohoo, this is awesome. And then over the next, oh, I don't know, couple of years, you know, whenever anybody wanted to give me a gift, they gave me a, a gift card to a coffee shop and I started meeting friends at these coffee shops and, and it becomes an easy habit to fall into getting these fancy drinks. Well, that's all fine and good, but A, they are loaded with sugar and fat and calories and B, they are expensive. And it all kind of changed for me when I started finding out the nutritional information. But then also somebody said, um, and I think it was right around New Year's one year, where someone said, you know, if you buy a coffee every day, it's 5 or $6, and at the end of the year, you would have wasted, quote unquote, you know, $2,000 or more on coffee, where you could make a cup of coffee at home for $100 or $200 a year if you drink two cups of coffee a day, and it's healthier for you, it's way cheaper, and then you can spend that money on something you actually want to put your money towards. And that was really, really an eye-opener to me. So these bad habits that we fall into, so often we do it in a, in a way to find our peace, right? Um, like that friend of mine who was having cocktails at the end of the night or Sometimes we settle down dead tired at the end of the day and we turn on the TV and watch it for an hour or two and we have our snacks or whatever. Um, Those habits that we fall into that we're looking for our peace, notice what the Apostle Paul had to say about peace. He said, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God's peace is going to guard our hearts and our minds. And we're not going to fall into bad habits when we are going to God for our peace. When we see the headlines and when things around us are getting crazy, we're not going to be like one of those inflatable guys, the inflatable men whose arms are waving in the air, and then it sort of bounces all the way to one side, and then the the wind takes it and it bounces all the way to the other side. You know, we're not going to be like that. We're going to be grounded in God. We're going to be grounded on his truths, the truths and the promises that we know that he's not going to leave us. That he's going to work all things for our good. That he is bigger than any situation. How awesome isn't it to go back in the middle of impossible situations and read, there's nothing impossible with God. I find that extremely comforting because so often I don't know what to do in a situation. I know if I make this decision, these people are not going to be happy with me. And if I make that decision, another group of people aren't going to be happy with me. And all of a sudden I am in an impossible situation. What do I do? I go to God. God, what would you do in this impossible situation? I'm going to need a little wisdom here and James says, if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God who will graciously give it to all. That's where we find our peace. There's a saying that says, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And you can, you can put so many different things in that saying. You can say, I don't know if we'll be able to afford A, B, C, D, E, or F, but I do know that we'll have food and shelter. I don't know if I'll have the same job six months months from now, but I do know that God will provide. I don't know if you'll be able to go to that school, but I do know that God will guide you and he will help you throughout your future and he'll be with you. It is so important to develop good, healthy habits because they can shape so much of who we are. 
and who we are to the world. That's even more important. So when it comes down to it, what do we need to remember? Make God's word our priority. Make him the place that we go to, that we run to, to find our peace and to find our guidance and um, to shape our outlook for life. Make sure that we're not um, looking and making idols um, and seeking uh, peace and comfort from what our hands do. And make sure to make prayer a priority too. That is a habit that can shape everything in your life. And it's so sad to think that James said, you know, you don't have because you didn't ask. Think about that. What about those, those things that are so stressful in your life? What if those things could have been over a long time ago, but you forgot to ask God about them? Or you, you forgot to invite God into the situation? Let's not get into that habit. Instead, let's develop healthy, godly habits, walking with God, so that we can not only have the peace that he gives, but also be a great testimony to the unbelieving world. This has been Little Things, because in God's kingdom, the little things are the big things. Please, right now, stop what you're doing and pray for us at Time of Grace. Pray for us as we aim to reach the unbelieving world with the truths of God. And if you're able, please remember to send in a financial contribution.